Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. We're one day away from Tesla's earnings. Today's Tuesday, July 18th, and tomorrow Tesla will be showing their quarter two 2023 earnings at about 4 p.m. Eastern, which is when the market closes. Uh, we're in the great outdoors and we're gonna go ahead and review some of my projections for the earnings report, as well as what to expect uh, from Tesla. So I'll start with uh, what I'm viewing to be the positives that will come out of this report. Uh, and what will influence the earnings for Tesla. I'll also cover my negatives and then some major variables to think through uh, as we anticipate the earnings tomorrow. So the first item that I think is going to positively impact Tesla's earnings is gonna be the higher mix of S and X sales for the quarter. So in the first quarter of 2023, Tesla sold about 10,000 S and X, Model S and X combined for the quarter. And for the second quarter, they delivered about 20,000. Now, the reason why this is gonna be positive for Tesla is that these vehicles are typically at a much higher average selling price than the rest of the lineup, in this case, the Model 3 and the Y, and those higher priced models would come with better margins. And doubling the amount of deliveries from one quarter to another should increase the gross margins for the vehicles from that perspective as they double the deliveries for the S and the X. Now, the second item that's going to positively impact earnings is gonna be increased operational leverage. So in the second quarter, Tesla delivered roughly 40,000 more cars than they did in the first quarter. And they did this with basically the same amount of factories. So they did it with Fremont, Austin, Berlin, and China, but they did more cars out of those facilities. And basically their headquarters was exactly the same, the same headcount. So what this means is that the total cost of the business is gonna be about the same, but they're gonna make more money from selling more cars. And this should improve or should help rather their operational margin. So sort of the bottom line number that Tesla will bring into the business. So that's the second thing that I think is gonna be quite positive for the earnings. Now, the third thing that ties closely with that operational leverage is that because they're shipping more cars out of their factories, places like Berlin, Austin, and China will also be shipping more cars relative to Q1. And the reason why that's good is uh, Tesla has spent a lot of time in the last few quarters and years in localizing their supply chain and their manufacturing process. That's this gnat or something's flying around my face. <laughs> and so what that means is they're not really gonna be taking on uh, a lot of costs that are associated outside of those factories. They're going to take on the costs that are closer to those factories. And so what that means is things like transportation costs should go down, raw materials should also go down because they're sourcing more stuff locally uh, and things like that. So that should help the cost structure of the company get better as they ship more products. And also about China, the, the reason why that's positive is China right now is Tesla's most profitable factory. And so if they're shipping more cars out of China, relative to the other places. And that means Tesla should be making more money on a per car basis. So that I expect to be a positive influence for the second quarter for Tesla. Now, the fourth thing that's positive is gonna be the higher energy margins. So last quarter, Tesla uh, started shipping more energy products, which was a good surprise for the quarter. I expect them to ship even more in the second quarter with slightly higher margins. I'm not expecting this to go significantly higher, like, you know, say 15 or 20% margin, but I do expect it to go up by a little bit. And as this business increases, uh, as, a bigger, as a bigger percentage of Tesla's total business with slightly better margins, and that means Tesla's gonna be making more money overall on that business, and it should help them be a little bit more profitable. Now, the two big things uh, to think through as we're thinking about the negatives for the earnings, by far the largest one is gonna be continued pressure on margin from the price decreases that Tesla did earlier this year in the first quarter. A lot of these orders would have shipped out in the first quarter, but then you're also gonna have lower margin products that are gonna be in the second quarter as well from that price decrease, as well as not having nearly as many cars that you were selling at a higher price in the first quarter that was tied to people that bought cars in Q4 that got it delivered in the first quarter. So another way to think about it is that you're gonna have more cars that are gonna be lower priced in the second quarter versus the first quarter, which is gonna impact margins uh, negatively. Now, a big variable that Tesla initially talked about last year, late last year, that I would expect uh, is gonna start taking into effect in, in this quarter really in earnest is how deflation and lower cost of goods is gonna start impacting Tesla's uh, earnings, especially as we've exited COVID and inflation has started to come down dramatically. 
Uh, this is a good, uh, a good thing to talk about here. This is the China producer price uh, changes. It's a graph from tradingeconomics.com, and it highlights how uh, prices out of uh, Chinese producers has dropped month over month. And this graph says that uh, it's dropped really for many consecutive months uh, since late last year. And in the latest month in June, uh, prices have dropped by about 5.5% year over year, which is really the lowest level since COVID started. And if you couple this with the fact that inflation uh, right now, according to Trueflation, in the United States at least is 2.15%, then this means that uh, at some point, Tesla is going to start recognizing uh, some lower costs on raw materials, especially as prices are dropped down year over year. But now you're also not gonna see this uh, dramatic increase in price prices for raw materials that we were seeing last year because of COVID. So you're going to have this effect where you're going to have lower raw material prices theoretically versus last year. And then because Tesla has more economies of scale by having more factories that are pumping out more cars, the per unit cost of their vehicle should come down. Now, the timing of when Tesla is going to recognize this is up for grabs and it's hard to calculate. But I will be looking out for this in the second quarter because we could start realizing some of these changes as early as this quarter in earnest. Like these, these price drops, essentially, we could start seeing them play out for Tesla. And what's additionally interesting here is that on this, uh, on this tweet that I shared, uh, Elon Musk himself replied to it and he said that this is my impression. So based on, on what I uh, sort of tweeted out, uh, he replied, this is my impression. So it looks like Elon is also seeing uh, a lot of this uh, trends in his businesses. Uh, it's important to keep in mind that uh, he oversees uh, two of really the, the large, one of some of the largest uh, supply chains in the world from an industrial perspective, automotive and rocketry. And so one would think that him and his teams have really good insight into how raw materials and costs are sort of changing from month to month and quarter over quarter in their supply chain teams. So an interesting signal there. Again, hard to calculate when this is going to start playing out accurately, but I would expect some of this to start playing out in the second quarter of this year. Now, before I share my numbers and where I think the, the earnings is going to end up from a profit perspective, one big thing to keep an eye on on, uh, for this quarterly earnings call specifically is what Tesla is going to be saying around the Cybertruck and its deliveries. Uh, we, I think we've all seen the picture of the Cybertruck, uh, the first Cybertruck being manufactured out of the Austin factory, which means that deliveries for this product are very, very close. And I would expect a significant portion of tomorrow's call to be focused on the ramp of that truck, when it's going to be delivered, so on and so forth. I, I think that they'll announce a date for deliveries on the quarterly call. I'm not so sure that they'll announce the pricing for it. I wouldn't be surprised if they do, uh, but I would expect them to say uh, at least when the delivery event uh, will occur for the Cybertruck. It seems like the right setting. It seems like with all the hype that they've <laughs> put out there with all the different pictures and all the uh, videos that we've seen of this uh, camoed uh, Cybertruck driving around California, one would think that we're gonna see some more details uh, officially from Tesla that tells us when this truck is going to be delivered. And of course, this bodes really well for the latter half of the year because now this means that Tesla has entered a brand new uh, segment in the car industry with the pickup truck. And so, of course, analysts will likely start thinking about this a little bit deeper, which could increase uh, projections for the stock price, so on and so forth. Not financial advice, but it's just uh, something to think through as we're thinking about the call. Uh, so I, I expect this to happen tomorrow, but we'll see. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. Let me know if you think I'm right. I, I Man, I think I would be surprised if they don't say anything about the Cybertruck delivery day. But, you know, I've been wrong a million times. I don't even know why you're watching this, <laughs> but I appreciate you being here. So. All right, here's some uh, of my numbers for tomorrow. Again, not a financial advice. This is just my projection. This is something I do for fun because I'm a nerd and I'm, I guess I'm weird, but uh, I, I rather, uh, I do enjoy sh showing this stuff and I want to be transparent about how I'm thinking about the company and when the, uh, where the numbers are going to end up. So at the top, let's think about revenues here. So total revenue, I'm expecting it to come in at about $25 billion. Uh, total costs i expect to come in around 20 billion which makes the gross profit 4.8 4.9 billion dollars uh, the operating expenses i expect to come in around 1.9 billion and this uh, gets our income from operations to be about 9.2.9 .9, right at 2.9 billion dollars and then after we calculate for all the other uh, uh expenses and whatnot our net income to stockholders will come down to 2.8 billion dollars 
and after we take into account the diluted shares, which is uh, what I use to calculate basically the earnings per share on a diluted basis, I come up with 81 cents per share uh, earnings per share. So these are my numbers. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, there are multiple uh, estimates from analysts and a bunch of other places. I, I'm kind of shying away from posting those because I feel like there's like four different versions and I never know which one, <laughs> which one's right. Seems like they're all their own number, but mine's coming in at 81 cents uh, earning per share. So let me know what your number is at. Let me know what you expect. Uh, let us know how you're thinking about tomorrow, what you expect from the call. And really, let me know in the comment section below, do you think they will announce the delivery date for the Cybertruck on the second quarter uh, earnings call? Uh, I think they will, and uh, we'll see what you think. All right, everybody, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll be hosting a, a big mega stream. Uh, it's probably gonna go four hours long with a bunch of people, uh, people you've probably seen many times. Uh, they're all super valuable uh, to the investing community, and we're super excited to talk about the earnings call. And uh, you might see some impressions as well from Matt Smith. He did some impressions last, <laughs> last quarter. Uh, he tried to predict what uh, some of the executives were going to say. He kind of nailed it, uh, even with their tone of voice and everything. So, Matt, you better be in front of that mirror practicing, bro, because that was, that was hilarious. Uh, all right, everybody. I hope this was informative and helpful. If you enjoyed it, give me a like. It helps the YouTube algorithm show there's more people. If you want to support the channel, I have merch and Athletic Greens in the description below, uh, both of which you can uh, purchase to support the channel. And Athletic Greens, in case you're not familiar, it's a supplement I take every single morning, and you'll get free travel packs and vitamin D with your purchase. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow. I hope you're ready. Bring some coffee and perhaps some wine. Uh, we might celebrate or champagne or beer, whatever, whatever you'd like to drink. All right, everybody. Take it easy. Bye-bye.